You ready to go feed the chickens and the horses and the goats? This is my normal routine for farm chores and today's video will go back down and I will be infusing botanicals, some which are grown here, it goes all over after the cat, and some of which I do order from Frontier Herbs. But we are gonna check Nellie's ligaments to see if she is in labor. So I have Nellie over here in the kidding pen with Bubbles in her little buckling. I must see if he's still limping. I had to give him banamine yesterday. Yep, he's still limping. So might give him more banamine. Why are you limping, boy? Huh? I don't feel any heat on his leg, but I have a call into the vet. You want breakfast, Bubbles? And I'm gonna check you, Nellie, see if you have ligaments. I can tell her udder is not really full or, but she is an example. Hey Nellie, give everybody, all of our watchers an example of what breeding through the fence gets you. Yes. Come on, where's your bowl? Is your bowl in here? All right. There you go. Let's see. No, don't run to me. She's not close because she's trying to get away from me. Oh, yeah, you got ligaments. Good morning, ponies. I hear you, goats. I'll be there in just a minute. Hold on. I'll go feed. There's three horses over there that are boarded here, but they're going to be finding a new farm so that we can grow our equine program for youth. Enjoy, ponies. All right, let's load up. Come on, Oliver. Let's go. So now I am going to cut some of these beautiful lilac flowers. And I'm basically just going to get the bouquet portion of the top. I'm not going to take the leaves. And then these will be dried. I also want to grab some dandelion root. And then we're going to go into my soap studio and I will show you I have some dried hibiscus. How I'm going to infuse that to use in my soap. It's a face soap actually. A honey and hibiscus soap. So one of the great things for a lilac, putting it on the skin, it is a great anti-inflammatory. It's great for um, any redness, rosacea, those kinds of things. It helps with blemishes. It is very powerful. And I will let these dry completely till there's no water left and then make a oil out of them to add to skincare. One more thing I wanna grab are these dandelions growing back behind my bench. So I will grab flowers and the greens.
So now I'm in my soap studio, which I will be doing a tour of soon. But I have lined my trays that I use on my curing rack over here for curing soaps um, with some correlated, uh, basically, cardboard. Uh, you can use parchment paper, but try to use something that's natural, not bleached, because you don't want anything leaching into your herbs. Let me tilt you down and I'll show you how I just spread these out on these trays and I will put them on my curing rack to dry. I want to make sure they're not really touching. And it's so much easier to dry them in these clusters because I will grind them down once they're fully dry. That means all the water is out of them. And then I will, I'm not gonna do the leaves. The sad thing about these lilacs is it's really hard to get the scent into a product, but the benefits are still there without the lovely floral scent. Now I will come through the days to come and, you know, move these around and see how they're doing, but I've got a few more spaces here and I will do the other one. The Dandelion root and leaves and flowers. I will probably dry them in my greenhouse It's just too dirty <laughs> to bring in my soap lab. So I'm sure you can use the leaves, but in reality the main benefits are in These flowers Okay, so what I have here is a clean uh, mason jar. I use 99% alcohol, rubbing alcohol to clean. Furthermore, in there to just make sure, you know, just kills off all the germs. And it air dries pretty fast. I have the same thing with the top, which I will spray as well and clean that. Now there's a certain amount of oils I need in my soap recipe, but what I'm going to do is take these, fill this jar to about halfway. I think I have enough. Now, I think I can do it without a funnel. Without spilling any. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fill it to the top with olive oil. And this is what I use, an organic 100%. It's an extra virgin olive oil. And you see the cloudiness? That is good olive oil. Now I'm gonna turn y'all around here. This is my melting station, my infusing station, and I'm just gonna set this right down in here. I'm gonna go and add a little more water, and I'm gonna put that on basically a low and just let it simmer. Here is some echinacea I harvest last year, so I will utilize the leaves and the buds and grind these up in a Cuisinart and utilize them in an oil infusion. But I probably will add them to some that I will get this year. We have tons of an echinacea here on the farm.
I love 